Today I am working on a table. I was lucky enough to purchase a, a new piece of equipment recently, rather new to me, 30 plus years old as best as I can estimate, a multi-tool system based on a lathe from a name brand. Very happy about that. Aside from that, I needed to build a pallet, for lack of a better say, uh, word, to transport the tool in my minivan because minivans have lots of lumps and bumps and I have transported a similar piece of equipment my Big Joe previously by myself. It's not the easiest thing to move something of that size and nature around, especially having to essentially crawl in and lift in a confined space up over all the bumps. So I made this, I made it with uh, a piece of OSB, two uh, pieces of two by four, that's what I bought. Everything else was already on hand. It originally had some stumps sticking off the end that facilitated the pick, uh, lifting, tilting and such, and gave me a longer tilt base. And I had some attachment points. Now, fast forward, get it home, get it out, great pictures of that. And suddenly I have something that I, I kind of wanted to keep as a sled, but really it was just more useful as a table. But um, I went out and got another sheet of OSB, I removed them, I laminated them together with glue, I uh, inserted some cross blocks because this is going to be my dirty metal table, essentially. I'm going to put my metal cutter on it, probably put my grinder, and this is going to be over in the corner by the door, and I'm trying to dur uh, make this more durable. So this is the purpose of the video, and this is a concoction that I've come up with, and I have used the liquid without the additive, the chunk before, and it is water glass. Water glass is sodium silica. It's essentially silica in a solution. Now, sodium silica has a very long history of being used for a variety of things. In agriculture, it's used in some barns, uh, traditionally, where they spray the wood, because the end result is that you have a coating of essentially silica glass that will um, fire, make the wood Rot resistant, fire resistant, mold resistant, uh, all kinds of things. And it makes the wood harder. Now on the OSB, because it's got moisture, it is swollen a little bit. This is my second coat. So it's not quite as smooth as it, as it was, but I'm fine, which is also part of the reason why I'm including and used a painting mixer to mix in the wood glue, which in this current, right now it's kind of chunky, but that helps facilitate the movement of the water glass to get it to soak in, and then I can come back in and smear the glue, and it will dry, and it will harden, and it will make my table much more durable and even heat resistant to a certain extent on this OSB. Now, this has a slight tint to it because I have used this particular mix before in, uh, with a fire stick, a poker that I use with my fire drill that was already charred from use when I got my hands on this product. And so it picked up a tanning and I'm simply using what was left. I had this stored in a bottle, a tequila bottle on a shelf for a, a long time that apparently had crack in it from squeezing it and whatnot that I was not aware of. And it had slowly leaked some, but it self seals because the silica, when it starts to evaporate, leaves literally little calcium or silica crystals on the outside and plugs the hole. Now I have added for this last coat um, a little bit of acetone in an attempt to try and keep the glue a little bit more malleable, a little bit longer and to improve my uh, placement and getting it to soak in. And I've been using my hand to rub, over rub on the edges of my OSB to get this all smoothed in. And it is my intent to use the full mass of what I've got left. So I'm just going to let all run out. And then if I really wanted to set this for the petrification process, which is essentially what we're doing here, um, I could apply heat to it. There are a lot of really awesome research papers out there about making petrified wood using sodium silica. And basically you are soaking in a wood that has been really well dried under vacuums and whatnot, and then under pressure, adding the liquid and then heat to actually set the silica into a rock. And there are a lot of exp uh, experiments where they've made stuff that is as close to petrified wood as you can get in the manufactured process. It's extremely durable and fire resistant. Some really interesting stuff for uses with making wood more durable. 
but I'm just going dirty. Uh, this particular product, sodium silicate, is available um, generically, but what I have here is from a company that had done all the time and effort to test it for use in concrete as a concrete additive. Sodium silica then fills a lot of the bonds and the crystals between the cell, uh, calcium has been a while, so forgive me for getting off of my quotes and, and sales pitches and whatnot. It makes the concrete uh, waterproof. Essentially water won't, won't really travel through because it's so dense at that point. Densifies the concrete and makes it extremely durable. This particular product, and this is not a place to advertisement. I haven't been in construction for a very long time. It's called PMT. Now you can buy sodium silica and add it to concrete yourself, I'm sure. But if you want to use it in construction, you've got to have it from a tested facility that can attest to the effect of their product when applied properly. So anyway, I'm just going to finish skimming this out. Stop talking. Try to at least. Now let's see. I'm sure at this point some people are like, that's too much water. That OSP is going to fall apart. Well, we'll see. But like I said, this is my second coat. I did some last night. Um, and I've had it air drying all night with a fan. some issues over here, but I'm probably going to put a clamp on that one. But for the most part, I expect that would be quite alright. Just taking the excess off so that it will dry faster in between. It's the consistency of blended oatmeal. Quite lovely. I'm not wearing a glove for so it's is toxic. I just I to protect my hand from getting beat up from sliding around the wood, picking up splinters. Well, I can say I, when I was in construction and still trying to represent the products where we wanted to use this, some really cool tests where we used it in concrete and made uh, waterproof, essentially bird baths that would not lose water at all. Now, I know for some people that may seem like, oh yeah, concrete holds water. No, not really. It sort of does. Um, with some awesome tests where you load water columns onto it, the tube that's adhered to concrete, and measure how fast the water moves through it, and it, de it doesn't when done properly, to, to make the point. So, waterproof concrete foundations and things like that. Anyway, uh, I'm going to clean up my mess that I just splashed down here and then facilitate the smoothing out of this and making sure that uh, this one spot where I seem to have some lifting, I'm going to clamp that down and let the glue do its thing and let this dry. Open the door, Texas spring, keep it warm. I just don't like shooting with the door open because of all the noise. Uh, and then I just feel like I get a better light in here. I'd love to see some comments, uh, some, you know, digs. I don't know if anybody's going to have a negative comment that think that this will fall apart, but I'd love to prove my point because, um, well, let's just say I enjoy that. Like, subscribe, uh, leave a comment, give me some feedback. If you've ever heard of this, it's a trick you know, or any old timers that you knew that you study in silica in their barns and whatnot for things like that, those traditional methods as opposed to modern industrial uses, uh, but water glass, awesome stuff. Thanks. My hose reels right off camera when the door's open.